Navy designed the F-14 for fleet tasks, and we think it does uh, that job magnificently. The F-14 has been operating off of the USS Enterprise in the Pacific Fleet, and uh, that this is its fleet introduction, and that our experience has been that the aircraft's performance has exceeded expectations. Now, in a fleet air defense role, and that means uh, shooting down enemy aircraft that threaten our ships at sea, we consider that the F-14 is about three times as good as the current F-4. The F-14, first and foremost, is an honest airframe. It's a product of the Grumman Iron Works. It flies and handles, controls simply, easily, nicely. It comes aboard at speeds approaching the A6 in the 120 knot area. The airplane has the computer controlled swing wing concept, which gives it a great advantage as far as being a good dogfighter is concerned. The F-14 has the long range Phoenix missile, which gives us approximately twice the range of any other missile that we know in existence today. As well as carrying the, the Phoenix, we do carry the Sparrow and the Sidewinder and the M61 Vulcan Cannon uh, for the closer in uh, dogfight arena. In summary, the F-14 is an extremely capable and flexible weapon system that does in fact permit the Navy to operate any place, any time.
This is USS Spruant, BD-963, which is the first of 30 destroyers of the class which are uh, under construction. The ship is designed to provide anti-submarine warfare protection and anti-surface ship protection to the fast carrier task force and to amphibious forces and of course all other convoys that we would have at sea. is equipped with a large helicopter facility. She will have an ASROC launcher. She carries Mark 32 torpedo tubes and the SQS-53 sonar, which is bow-mounted and which is the most capable sonar we have in the fleet today. An interesting thing about the design of this ship is careful attention has been given to its capability for future modernization or conversion. That five inch gun forward can be replaced with an eight inch gun. In the same way, the ASROC launcher can be replaced with launchers which could fire harpoon or uh, tartar any aircraft missile. The ship will be powered by gas turbines. It's the first major warship to be so powered. Its length is 563 feet overall, a beam of 55 feet, displacement of about 7,800 tons. This is just about the same size as the Atlanta-class cruiser that saw so much service in World War II. <laughs> The habitability of this ship should be the best that we have and have ever had in a destroyer. A ship also will have uh, air conditioning and will have lighting and noise suppression features uh, which are superior to that which we've seen in the past. This assault concept is a costly one and a complex one. As a result of a study several years back, it was considered that there would be a considerable saving in people and in dollars if we could optimize the characteristics of our assault ship into one modern warship. And that's what we have here in the LHA. To give you a good frame of reference, the LHJ is equivalent to a World War II attack carrier. She's approximately 820 feet long and just under 40,000 tons displacement. She'll travel at over 20 knots and therefore will be in the vanguard of any amphibious operation in the future. The principal feature of the ship that makes it an attractive ship from the amphibious picture is that she offers operational integrity to the Marine landing team embarked. The LHA can take their troops ashore by helicopter if that's more advantageous, or by wheel to track vehicles over the beach, or by landing craft if that's the chosen method. And it can do all three. It carries over 1,700 troops plus all of the wheeled equipment that goes along with them, and all of the miscellaneous cargo necessary to support them for an integrated and an all-out initial attack.
tactical integrity and operational flexibility given the task force commander is truly a new feature of this new class of ship, the LHA. Well, I'm very much interested. I think we're all very much interested in the surface effects ship the idea. We've got to we've got to develop uh, great speed to be able to react anywhere in the world uh, in the shortest possible time. And I think the later generation of surface effects ship will give us that. We'll be able to respond to a major threat anywhere in the world in three or four days, even the remote areas. And uh, I'm hoping to be a, the first hundred knot secretary. <laughs> pioneering this SES field. We had two smaller craft. We had one at three tons and one at 17 tons. And they looked good, so the next step was 100 ton. Uh, Bell Aerospace built the one which you uh, see here, and Aerojet General at Tacoma built the 100A. So these are really our developmental tools to go to the 2,000 ton ship. These were to prove the feasibility of the concept, and we have just completed the contractor test and evaluation program, and we are starting the, uh, in the design and the development of the uh, critical parts of the 2,000-ton ship. Uh, as you know, we now have all Navy crew for both of these craft. And these will be our, our training classrooms. These will be the classrooms for the crews that will man the 2,000 ton ships. This craft will make, it will do about 35 to 40 knots in eight to 10 foot waves, it has done it. But this was designed to operate in six foot waves. This one achieved a speed uh, slightly over 80 knots, which uh, out in the bay here, which as far as I know is the fastest that this, any of these craft have ever gone, even what the British have. The, performance of these craft have exceeded our expectations and they, in that respect we have exceeded the contract requirements which is uh, kind of unusual in a developmental program. This airplane is the E-2C. It's also called the Hawkeye. It's an airborne early warning airplane. What this airplane uh, really does is, is to provide the answer to the problem that has caused consternation to every ship captain and every task force commander since navies came into existence. He has to know where the enemy is and what he's doing. The E-2C Hawkeye provides the answers to, to his questions on that and what his own forces are doing. For example, this airplane could be flying over Philadelphia and discern just about all of the airliners flying between Boston and, say, Norfolk. We have, uh, incidentally, and this is certainly an improvement over any previous airplanes, a, a data link, digital data links between the airplane and any ships in the task force that might be on the Navy tactical data system net. Why, we basically transmit the same picture 
that the E2C Hawkeye has on its radar scope to the radar scope uh, aboard the ship. In the dome are two antennas, an antenna for the radar. There's also a IFF antenna, the Emergency Identification Friend and Foe, the old World War II IFF. Who's your friend and who's your foe? People in my project office are very proud of, of this particular airplane because we've done what we said we would do, when we said we would do it, and within the cost that we said we would do it. This is probably one of the mo most successful acquisition programs in the Navy. proud of the Nimitz. She's the first of a new class of aircraft carriers, a follow-on to the Kennedy and Enterprise class. As you know, she is nuclear powered, has two of the largest nuclear reactors in the world to power the, the ship. It is designed to support, operate, and to maintain the most modern aircraft the Navy has. The Nimitz represents the major element of power in our conventional warfare forces. It's the Nimitz, surrounded, protected, and supported by nuclear frigates, is the key element in projecting naval power, both ashore and in, to ensure control of the seas. Well, I have a crew of over 5,000 officers and men, and we have all the support necessary to make this a comfortable, capable place to live and work. The effort was made in building <coughs> the Nimitz to automate and to replace with equipment those jobs that, that were suitable for automation and to reduce the manning to the lowest possible level. Uh, attendant with this, of course, we do have a, a more complex ship. reduction in the total numbers of ships in the Navy, we've got to gain a greater multi-purpose mission capability in each unit. Therefore, I believe that we must emphasize in the U.S. Navy an offensive capability, and that offensive capability for surface combatants would reside in missiles such as Harpoon and uh, extended Harpoon or a long-range cruise missile that we might see in the future. The Harpoon missile is an anti-ship weapon system being developed by the Naval Air Systems Command. This missile is being designed as a versatile, common weapon that will go on many different launch platforms. In the aviation community, the weapon will be able to be based from a shore-based P-3 squadrons. It will also be capable of being put aboard carrier-based S-3 and A-7 aircraft. In the surface Navy, the missile is currently being designed and developed and fired from the DE class ships and also is planned to put aboard the DDG and DLG class. Also, the PHM Navy will be receiving the Harpoon missile. As well as the SSN. The 
missile is designed with a range of approximately 60 miles. It is a surface skimming missile with an active radar seeker. During the design phase of the Harpoon weapon system, 12 engineering models of the Harpoon missile were fired with 10 successfully impacting the target. In the present stage we're in the weapon system development phase, we are now firing prototype missiles. Thus far we have fired 11 missiles, of which 10 again successfully impacted the target. This is a PHM-1 Pegasus. The PHM is a NATO program. Germany and Italy have shared the cost of the design of the lead ships. The first two ships will be built for the United States. We'll have 28 more ultimately as part of a production program with which Germany and hopefully Italy will be involved. The German plan is for 10 ships. The Italians have planned for four ships. The crew of the Pegasus will be four officers and 17 enlisted men. So it's a very small crew, a very compact ship. Perhaps the most important characteristic of a hydrofoil is that it's an extremely stable platform in very rough weather. In weather which will cause a destroyer to slow down, this ship will be able to operate at at least 40 knots and be much more stable than a much larger ship and therefore its weapons will operate better and will be more effective as a weapon system. The ships are powered by a gas turbine which drives a water jet pump in the foil borne condition. Then there are two hull borne water jet pumps which are driven by German diesel engines. The PHM weapon system consists primarily of eight harpoon missiles it also has a 76 millimeter Italian gun. The 76 millimeter gun is used for both anti-surface attack as well as anti-air protection for the ship. The total displacement is 235 tons, but with eight Harpoon missiles should be a very effective fighting ship. Viking aircraft was seen as a replacement for the S-2 Tracker, which was an old propeller-driven aircraft of a 1948 to a 1952 vintage with several other derivatives that were built in the latter years. Several inherent advantages in the aircraft over the old S-2 is its increased range and its increased ability to process a tremendous amount of data that was previously unavailable to a carrier ASW air crew. The aircraft's level of sophistication is significantly greater than has been seen in carrier ASW before. The aircraft does have a dash capability or it's speed limited to 450 knots or .79 indicated Mach number. This gives it the ability to transit extremely rapidly to a known contact area. The aircraft also has the ability to maneuver extremely well. It's designed and optimized to fly as slow as 160 knots or 150 knots in that area in a maneuvering situation and at the same time it has its tremendous dash capability. We use just four people 
and they have several distinct functions. Although the aircraft is a multi-piloted aircraft, one of the pilots who functions as a co-pilot is really a non-acoustic sensors operator and a navigator and a communicator. The other two crew members are the tactical coordinator who is a naval flight officer and a sensor operator who is an AW. The aircraft is designed to be able to be operated off of any of the existing uh, carriers that we have in the inventory today. Sleek, powerful, and sophisticated, SSN-690, the USS Philadelphia, the third of 28 planned Los Angeles-class nuclear attack submarines, new extensions of American strength and endurance under the seas. When her hull slips into the Thames River here in Groton, Connecticut today, the U.S. Navy will flex a new muscle. She'll carry the most advanced weapons and anti-submarine systems ever devised. No World War II submariner in his wildest imagination could possibly have dreamed up such a ship. Well, uh, it's the first new class of submarine, attack submarine, we have built in, te in 10 years. Uh, the uh, 688 class will give us uh, the most advanced attack submarine in the world. This submarine uh, will be uh, have a very proven uh, nuclear power plant. It will have uh, uh, the most advanced sensors, the most advanced uh, computer equipment, uh, I'd say the most advanced fire control uh, equipment in the world. And uh, it'll give us an edge for a period of time. have the newest aircraft, the most modern ships, the most advanced weapons in our inventory, but unless we have the personnel who can maintain and operate those systems properly, we will never come close to realizing the true potential of the force we have. We've got to have a stable force of dedicated and professional men and women in the service who are in the Navy because that's what they want to do and who are motivated primarily by a wish to serve. 